Commander Cooker Podcast, episode 347. I'm Brandon. I'm here with Ryan and we're back. Be it bad influences now. Hit our theme song. <laughs> Hey Ryan, we're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? We're back. What is going down? Final show of the year. Final show of the year. It's going to be. Are we? Are we sure? Yes. I said that. Yeah, we talked about that. Yep. Earlier. Final this. show of the year. Final show of the. We made it. <laughs> we did. Hooray! We 20, think 2022 could fucking suck it, and I'm super happy it's over, and eat my ass 2022. That's fine. It was a fine year. It wasn't actually that bad when you look back at it. Although there are some some ups and some downs that we will talk about on next week's show. Yeah. On this week's show, we got, or this week's, today's show. Because last week was this week's show. This yep. is just a bonus episode that yep. we're going to do because we're fucking fun. Yep. And we like doing this kind of stuff. We're going to talk about a cool deck from a cool guy. Yep. We're going to talk about some stuff. Maybe give some more stuff away. Do we have any more things to give away? I don't have anything done, but it's after Christmas. And we, you know what? Uh, specifically, we haven't had that same pre-show giveaway. We've got two or three built up now mm-hmm. because we've recorded so many in a row. So we don't have to work literally Christmas Eve yeah. and New Year's Eve, which is when we normally would record during the week on those days. So, Man, having the holidays on actual weekends kind of stinks. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yep. not the, it's not the best. I like yep. it when we have extra days off. Not Stinky, though. Not Stinky is our official business, Daddy's Fusion Gaming Online.com. They are your source for all your gaming needs. Yes. New promo code. Okay. If you're listening to this on the day it comes out, okay. CCO Spring promo code. Yeah. New promo code coming up. I'm sure it's not going to take effect right at midnight on January 1st because some person has to manually change the code. Yeah. <laughs> but coming up in the future, if it doesn't work, you can get after us at Commander Cookout, at CCO, or sorry, at CCO Podcast, at CCO Brando on Twitter. Contact us through Patreon, Discord, Facebook, whatever, because that will be changing. And we know that people go to use the promo code to save 5% off on shit that they're going to buy anyways. Mm-hmm. And don't necessarily have exactly the time to keep up with the show right when it comes out. Yeah, which, I mean, unfortunate, but understand. You should, just like you should watch on YouTube. Yeah, because the Joe and the... And the, the, the Joe? The Joe and the Tyler look work really hard to make us look good. Yep. That's hard. Yeah, all year. Especially these last couple shows, because we've both been a little oh, under man, the weather and been... at the risk of... at the at the mercy and the whim of the changing temperatures and pressures and shit. Mm-hmm. I'm sucking on a cough candy Society right now. Society pressures and, 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 and the, the to-do with the holiday season. Oh, holy man. Man, I'm telling you. We are strung out. Yeah. Not the band, but the feeling. I still haven't passed all that eggnog I had yesterday. Damn. Two days ago now for people who are listening on the, <laughs> yeah. The three weeks in the future. For yeah, geez, I'm going to end up in the fucking paper yeah, if I, I don't go to the bathroom soon. I know, I know for, for a fact that we may or may not still be on that car ride from hell from Calgary. Yeah. And that makes me sad. Yep. But you know what? I think that we're home and safe and we had a great holiday and we're going to have a really great new year coming up. Yep. We haven't really talked about plans yet. Nope. But I assume we're going to do something fun yep. either together or individually. Yep. Mm-hmm. I got some fun stuff. Okay. I got some podcasting business that I'm going to put a fun little nipple twister on. Okay. Okay. We got another face-to-face event games, face-to-face games event coming up. Do we? February 4. 4. And that one is in Saskatoon. Uh-oh. Smack a bush. It's, it's here and your boys That's are going to be involved. And what's going to be cool is Watsy pushed back a set a week. So now the pre-release for Phyrexia All Will Be One? All Will Be One, yes. The pre-release for that set is going to be on the day of the face-to-face games tour stop Saskatoon oh, shit. day. Mm. So there's going to be Modern and Pioneer and, of course, Commander. Yeah, baby. And whatever the main event is, I don't know, whatever the season is, if it's Modern or Pioneer or Standard, I don't know. But, of course, there's all the side events and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. What's special about this is it's it's going to be kind of a special edition tour stop that that we're going to be involved in some of the planning of to make it even more fun than what I'm about to say. But what's going to happen is there's actually going to be two pre-releases that day at the face-to-face games event. You like that? So Thank there's going to be 
Commander, both casual and competitive. Uh -huh. Main event, uh -huh. side event drafts, and what have you. Uh -huh. And then an amazing no, a, um, uh, an amazing stories pre-release in the morning. I think eleven. All the details are are, are coming out soon. It, it, it's going to be a, a morning pre-release, uh -huh. and then there's going to be a collector's lane. Those are our two stores. Uh -huh. Pre-release in the afternoon. Cool. Yeah. Now, what I don't have confirmed yet in an official capacity is there is going to be some after party of sorts. Uh -oh. That's where your boys come in. <laughs> and if nothing officially gets uh, promoted, sponsored, paid for, included in your price, whatever, you have to believe that we're going to find a room or a place or a bar or a restaurant and go open packs, jam games, put beer into any orifice that will fit yes. beer into. Correct. Because we're good uh, at that. So talented. If you're coming from Edmonton, Calgary, Winnipeg, Regina, Moose Jaw, Prince Albert, doesn't yeah, dirty. Yeah. Well, wherever you're coming from. If you're coming from PA, shower first. I'm from PA. Shower first. Lots of locals don't know that I'm actually from PA, I don't think. Because I don't have the PA accent anymore. No. But uh man, when I hear my sister talk now, it's like, oh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. Anyways, yeah. if you're coming locally. Stick around like the the event is at the Saskatoon Inn, which is sort of by the airport, but it's surrounded by other hotels. Oh, yeah. And and I'm hoping that like, like oh, it's in that little room again. Well, oh, yeah, but appara it, apparently it's going to be bigger. Okay, so I I do hope that it'll be bigger. Yeah, and it's not going to be during the summer. Oh, good. so <laughs> at least it'll be cold outside if you need to cool down. Yes, but I'm hoping that. If nothing else, we can just keep the banquet room rental, and that's what we can have catered and licensed, and that's Ooh. where the after party can be. That could be fun. But again, I don't have that confirmed yet, but I am excited about that event that's because be it's our time. home turf, and and some of our, uh, like, the CCO Dude Bros can be there, yep. and the locals, and you know, like, extra people come out for, like, uh, pre-releases and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Dads bring their kids and stuff. It's a family mm. affair. Yeah. Except the beer drinking part. Yeah, the beer drinking. Well, I mean, nah, you know, nah, nah, nah. Alcoholism destroys families. Be very careful. Uh, it can if you're not careful. Yes. That's a CCO life, life lesson. lesson. There it is. Mm -hmm. CCO life lesson. Dis, uh, January 12th? 12th. Sidewalk Slam goes live to patrons? Yes, it does. 13th? Live goes for everybody live else. Live for everybody else. So I'm going to force Tyler to uh, work on that. Good. And um, chain him to his desk. Whip him with um, the leaves of a palm tree. There are no kink shamers in the nation. No, he might like that. Want. I'm gonna have to find something he doesn't like. Yeah. Yeah. Soap. I'm gonna I'm gonna rip up Ill Hargs in front of him. <laughs> That's his favorite card. <laughs> I wonder what editor Joe's favorite card is. Hmm. I never asked him that before. Oh, we should. We should, and then we could dunk on it. Yeah, and then we can tell him it sucks. Yeah, because it probably does. Probably does. It's probably <laughs> on the screen right now, and he's probably trying to it's meme on us. It's probably Deserted Temple, that card, that land, that untaps yeah. another land that we always forget. How did you remember it this time? Ah, he memed on me enough, I guess. Oh. Maybe I said the wrong card. You probably did. What if I next leveled and said the wrong card on purpose, and he memed on us with it? Oh, oh. Uh, Maybe I did. Is it more funny if I did it accidentally or if I did it purposely? Yes. <laughs> yes is the answer to that question, Ryan. Oh, fantastic. Final bit of podcasting news. Yeah. Business, whatever. Meh. I don't know at this point in time if the, the updated website's launched. Probably is. But if you're, if you're following us on Twitter, if you interact with us on Facebook, if you're in the CCO Discord, just watch out for any time I ask about what kind of merch you want. Because remember, CCO socks, shirts, hats I get asked out about, yeah. asked about a lot. Sleeves. Dice, and the number one is sleeves. So if I know that enough people want any of that stuff, I'm going to look into making it happen because I want CCO Nation to get and have the things that they support us to get and have and the things that they want and, and high-quality stuff that they're going to use in their everyday gaming and body covering um, endeavors. Yeah. Yes. Our clothes have to be sweet because you live your life in them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, we should get like CCO jock straps and like mankinis. Yeah. And those that one that Borat wears that goes up over his shoulders. Just CCO, just right on the junk. I don't know if I'd wear that though. I don't know. I don't have that kind of confidence. That's a you thing. CC only fans. Yep. Maybe I'll do a workout in one. Get all my muscles all ripply. <laughs> 
Speaking of ripply muscles, and Tyler from a couple minutes ago. Which Tyler? We have a new Tyler. We have a different Tyler to talk about. Oh, yeah. This is Tyler Matuli Stone. No, I don't like to play favorites, but, but I it, fucking do play favorites. This Tyler is your favorite Matuli Tyler. Stone, my favorite <laughs> Tyler. Not close. Oh, man. Not even close. Love this guy. Hung out with him a few times. He's good people. Yeah. So if you ever see him somewhere, be like, hey, and then give him the finger, and yeah. he'll he'll know. He'll know. He'll know. He'll yeah. And he'll like it. Yeah, he'll probably think it's funny. Yeah. Probably. He he sent us a deck in, and I wanted to do this for several reasons. It's the holiday. It's a little Christmas present to Brando, because oh. what we have here is a mono red, sort of control soft stacks list that includes Brash Taunter oh, for the boy, second day in a row. Your boy can only get so hard. And oh, it yeah, also, more. no, but this is for there's me more. now. I'm, I'm flipping more. the switch on you. It's a fucking advisor. <laughs> <laughs> so this is anti-blight bad influencer. A 2-2 two, two devil advisor for red 2 with flying, which I'm sure that's relevant because she's probably going to get big. Well, she flies because she's got little wings. Yes. And I don't know. She's the little devil that sits on the guy's shoulder. And I don't know if you've ever seen those, but they're usually floating. Yes. Even if they're sitting, they're not sitting they're floating and sitting, which is weird. That's kind of funny, hey? Yeah, but That's funny. Just wait, there's more. Mm. Whenever a source we control deals damage to us, ooh, my ears are starting to prick. Yes. <laughs> Put a plus one, plus one counter on anti-blight bad influence. Oh, shit. Okay, so maybe if we damage ourselves, that how, then, how, then how she gets big. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Red one tap, remove X plus ones from anti-blight. It deals X damage to any target. Boom. Ooh. Boom goes the dynamite, as any they say. Any target. I like any target. because I like that. Any target usually means you're going to kill some son of a bitch, and I like that. I like dealing any damage to Brash Taunter when we have some of the cards in here that yeah. we are playing. Yeah. Ooh. So, I don't know. what First impressions when you saw the deck. I saw Brash Taunter. I got excited. Oh. I saw all the red cards. I got excited. Oh. I saw some of the cards in the Auntie's Wrath and Auntie's Rules section, and I was very interested. Oh, yeah, very much so. Custom categories themed to... Um, when you think Auntie, and, and maybe art of this card notwithstanding, with, withstanding, what do you think? Do you think of, like, your mom's nice sister... Or no. do you just like think of the just haggard old crone that like you that pinches your face and tells you that you're doing a bad job? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think of my mom's like nice sisters just getting totally possessed by the devil. Oh no, I just think of like kill me. I just think of that like nasty old crone and she's all wizened and her neck's all down, she looks like a spine yeah. a bifid and she's coming in with her hunchback. Meh, you fucking guy. You're a failure. You've never done anything right by anybody. Yeah, just like your father. Exactly. Because she hates her sister's husband. Yeah. <laughs> just like your father. Yeah, and she's got like a beer can like shoved down between her sad. No, no, boobs. Vo vodka bottle. Oh, yeah. Vodka and like a bottle. Mickey of vodka. And she's got like a solo cup on the bottom of her peg leg, and she's just the worst. And then she's got like a little fuzzy white cat. Oh, the, the fuzzy white cat. And she has a box of Kleenex in the back window of her car. Mm. Or or the, that's where the stuffed fuzzy white cat is because she wants to look in her rearview mirror and not see the person behind her in her rearview mirror. No, she wants to see a stuffed version of her own cat. Or she's got one of those stupid little white barking dogs and that always has brown on its face. And where's she going? She's going somewhere where she can buy an artisanal sandwich, and she's not going to tip the person that makes her sandwich. No, she's not. She's, she's not. going, going to ask for exact change. She's going to bingo. Oh, yeah. Or she's going to buy that, that, that scent of old lady perfume that all oh. old ladies wear. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, That's no. where she's going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where she's going. Yeah. yeah. And she's going to buy it at, like... The giant tiger, the Dollar Tree. No, she's gonna get it at a at a at a fancy place like a department store. That's oh, like where the, she's gonna get it because she's got lots of money. Like the Bay. She's gonna go to the Bay. Mm -hmm. She's gonna get this nice perfume, and it's gonna last her her whole life. And the organic material 
suspended in the alcohol that is the perfume is going to start to break down. Uh-huh. And that's why all this is real. This is why all old lady perfume smells the same because it's old enough that it's broken down the organic matter in the alcohol. So what you're spe- smelling is is what is the remnants of what's left of the organic m- matter in there that makes it smell. Nice, yeah. Plus the alcohol. And that's the little percentage of actual perfume that you're smelling is the stuff that takes the longest to break down. And generally that is comprised of the same stuff in like suspended in the alcohol. So Oops. that's why all old lady perfume smells like the same and that's what anti blight I assume smells like. Correct. Should we start? Yes, we should. Let's get to it. Where should we start, Ryan? Okay. Auntie's bank account. I just talked about it. This is like her her mana ramping section. I'm gonna go through it relatively fast because we got some we got some goods, some bangers. Jessica's will, rite of flame. That's a that's a ritual. Cursed mirror. That's a mana rock that becomes a creature when it ETB. Soul ring, skyclave relic, caged sun. That's a mana doubler. Going to be important. Arcane signet, mana geyser. That gives you a red for each tap land your opponents control. Uh-huh. Seething song. That's a ritual. Mind stone. You can cash that in to draw a card if you don't need the mana no more. Uh-huh. And a pristine talisman, which is very important to gain a life whenever you add mana to your mana pool. Yes, because we're going to be Sorry, hurting I, ourselves. I said that wrong. It's tap, add a mana, gain a life. Yes. Yes, because we're going to be hitting ourselves. Yeah. So that could be the difference. Even if over the course of a game, it only like gives us four or five life. Yo, if you two, that matters. If you two everyone and then gain a life, you have taken 50% less damage than everybody else. Than anyone else. Yeah. Yes. So that's that's a thing. There's also a Sol Ring. Oh, didn't I say Sol didn't Ring? Didn't say Sol Ring. Well, there's a Sol Ring. There's also a Sol Ring. You could have assumed. Yes, dude. yeah, you could usually figure that out. <laughs> okay, Auntie's closet. This is another just little thematic place to go. There's We've some got, good stuff in here. Yeah, I'll, I'll read the good stuff. We've got Lightning Greaves, sure, Haste and Shroud. Resurrection Orb, a two-drop equipment that says equipped creature has lifelink. There we go. Very important to gain our life back. Okay, yes. whenever equipped creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Neat. So when when we deal damage to ourselves, but also it, it damages anti-blight, uh-huh. then we could just get a rack yeah. if she dies. That's right. Basilisk Caller. Death Touch and Life Link. Very good. And remember, you remove plus ones to deal damage to any target. Mm -hmm. So you can just remove one and kill something. Yes. Or gain life. And gain a life. And gain a life. It's not an or. It's both. Yes. Swiftfoot Boots. That's protection. Shadow Spear. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one, trample, and life link. Mm -hmm. Very important. Yes. And you can pay one for permanence your opponent's control to lose hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. That's a really good card. That's a good card, and you have to remember that any target. Yes. Anti-Blight says any target, so we can remove hexproof and indestructible from stuff. Mm-hmm. Last one for lifelink is equipped creature gets plus three plus O and gains trample and lifelink until end of turn. That's locks it on Warhammer. Yes. Yes, and I, I don't know why I left that one to last, but I want to... Put it in yours and everyone's brain that maybe we can do a Voltron backup win con in this deck. Well, absolutely, you can. Okay, hundred percent, you I'm can. Just putting it out there. Oh yeah, when you when we get to the the get to the getting, we'll they'll they'll get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Auntie checks her bank account. She's got lots of money. Goes into her closet. Gets dressed up. Yep. Goes out to the spa. Okay. Spa day. Spa day. Al Halmeret's archive spa. Whenever you would gain life, gain twice that much. There we go. Whenever you draw a card, except for the first one your turn, draw another one. Neat. Ooh, that's a good one. Vencer's Journal. I'm starting to recognize a theme here. No max hand size. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of your upkeep, gain a life for each card in your hand. So you're rejuvenating yourself at the spa. Yes. She's getting the treatment. She's got the cucumbers on her eyes. Yes, and her clothes, all her clothing, all um, neatly pressed. Shapewear. Yeah. Like spanks and stuff to make oh, her yeah. looking all sexy, even though she's kind of falling out of the place sometimes. Yep. Okay. Yep, yep, okay. Yep. We we Gucci we with there. that. Okay. Dragon's Claw. Whenever a player casts a red spell, we gain one life. Now I know that, that costs two, but whenever I see a card like this, I always like to think I like Paradise Plume better 
Yes, it costs four, but it's also a mana rock. No. Yeah, does you, the same if you thing. Get, if you get two mana out of it later in the game, it actually becomes better. Yeah. A Paradise Plume, you choose a color? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then in that case, if you're like playing against a Storm player that's playing like red and yeah. we're playing blue, we can we can gain life off of them. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty cool. I like that card. Yeah, these are fine. Okay. Auntie's cash stack or cash stash. She's looking good. She's spotted up. Maybe she's going to meet like her guy or her other guy. Yeah. Or maybe she's just like going and checking like a safety deposit box if people still use those. They probably do. They probably do. Let's read some of those. You give some of those yeah, a read. We got Wheel of Misfortune. Oh, man. I don't even know what that card does still. Okay. And moreover, I don't know how to play that card. Let, let me let me say it the way I tell people when I play the card. Sure. So you play Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. Everybody picks a number. Wheel of Misfortune. Wheel of Misfortune. Sorry. Yeah. Everybody pick a number. Sure. Whoever picks the highest number, or tied for the highest number, they take that much damage and wheel their hand. Okay. Okay. Whoever picked the lowest thing gets nothing. And whoever picked in the middle, they just get to wield their hands. Okay. So I would do like 20. It's a little high. No, it isn't because anti-blight then would get plus 20 plus 20. Do you get all that many? Yeah. Yep. I do 25. <laughs> 25. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So yes, Wheel of Misfortune, very good. I guess I would I would do nineteen. I would go Wheel of Misfortune, and I just write down on a little piece of paper yeah, nineteen. 19. Yep. And uh, you you take a D twenty is what you do, right? Everybody takes a D twenty, pick puts it on a number and covers it, and then yeah. they all reveal it. Or you could use two D twenties if you're not a coward. I mean, yeah, forty. Yeah. But you, you could do nineteen. We've gained and, a lot of life. And then anti blight becomes a twenty one twenty one, and you hit the person that has no flyers. Yeah. And kill them. F fucking good night. Yes. <laughs> you ever meet God? Exactly. You want to meet Santa? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was the first uh, stack of cash. Yes. Valakut Awakening. As you put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library, draw that many cards plus one. Sure. Very good. I think that one's also a land on the other side. Yes. It is. Thrill of Possibility is you discard a card, draw two cards. Sunbird's Invocation? Oh. That gains a spell Cascade. Let's just say that. Essentially, yes. Yeah. Yes. I should play that in my Cascade deck. I don't know. Sunbird's Invocation's hard for me. I, 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 it never performs the way I want it to. I've played it a few times. It's never worked. Yeah. I, maybe Tyler Matuli Stone has had better luck with than I have, but I've never gotten any kind of real value out of this card. It's one of those ones like, um, uh, who's the God Eternal Aketra? Where it... When you see it in your hand or you see it available to you, it mentally changes your play style. So now you're trying to like save some of your stuff so that you can throw it into your Sunbird's Invocation and you end up not doing stuff at opportune times because you're trying to save it to get the most bang out of it. You know what? If I had a Sunbird, I, I was just theorizing it in my head as you were saying that, in my Cascade deck it would actually be very good because let's say I cast a 7 drop with Cascade. And then I don't want to hit a three drop or whatever mana rock, but maybe in the top seven cards of my library, there's something else for five that would have been below that mana rock that I can cast without paying its mana cost and also still get the cascade from that. Yeah. This does kind of give cascade to my stuff. It would sure. fit in the deck. Sure. Anyways, uh, it gives your stuff cascade. <laughs> yeah. We have Magus of the Wheel. That's He's a Wheel of Fortune. On a dude. Yeah. Goblin Engineer. Ooh. Enters the battlefield, search your library for an artifact, put it into your graveyard, then shuffle. Sure. You can go uh, red, tap, sack an artifact, return target artifact card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. And you'll remember every equipment that I named, all three or less. Yeah. So lifelink is what that can give us. It can also give us a dragon's claw to gain life, and it can also give us three of our... I'm going to call them control pieces so people don't turn the episode off. Yes. <laughs> control pieces. And the the last card in that section is Faithless Looting. W the Goblin Engineer could probably be Goblin Welder if money. But is Goblin Welder lots? No, it, Engineer. Or, yeah, Welder's more. Well, Welder is more than Engineer, I think. But this is a tutor. Yeah, I guess. Goblin gets Welder is just a switcher. Yeah, it's just a switcher. This does both, but it only gets little things. Yeah, little things. But mostly little things in this deck, I think, are what we're going to care about because we want that lifelink bad. Yeah, we <laughs> do. Okay, so 
auntie has left the house. Yep. She's checked her bank account. Yep. She's hit the spa. She's yep. looking good. She's suited up. She's got some cash in her pocket. Where is she going? To do some extracurricular activities? Oh, shit. I don't know what that means. I'm not, And I'm not going to theorize. Based but, on the auntie that we've described, I am not theorizing about that at all. Uh, she's probably going to Chippendales. Nope. No. She's oh? not. She's going to... Bingo. Oh, yeah. Other old people that just, they bingo, sit and they play bingo. but the people who come around and check your cards, all muscly oiled up dudes in thongs. Oh, damn it, Ryan. Hey. Kedis Emberclaw Familiar. Kedis Emberclaw Familiar, our first muscly oiled up guy. Yep. A 1-1 one, one for 2. Whenever a commander you control deals combat damage to opponent, it deals that much damage to each mother ass other opponent. Lol. Yeah, yeah. That's kill one guy? Nope. Kill all the guys. Lol. All the muscly guys. Grafted exoskeleton. That gives your equipped creature infect. And plus two, plus two. Yeah. Need we say more? Yeah. And then we have Fiery Emancipation and Furnace of Wrath. That's a damage tripler and a damage doubler, yes. respectively. Yes, and and remember, we're playing one of Brando's boys. So if we deal damage to one of Brando's boys, Uh-oh. and then that boy deals damage to one of our opponents, uh-huh. we could go from 10 damage from Anti-Blight to 20 or 30, uh-huh. and then from 20 or 30 to 40 or 60. Or, or, or. or. Or 60 or 90, which is way better. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah 60 yeah. or I 90. I think my math was wrong. <laughs> yeah, but my math is right because I'm good at brash taunting. And we have a Chandra's oh, you, Ignition You let well. the cat out of the bag. What, what did I do? Did I say brash taunting? Yes. Yeah, I did. He, we said he was here already. Yeah. And then we have a Chandra's Ignition because remember, if we 20 ourselves with Wheel of Misfortune or what have you, mm-hmm. and then we go Chandra's Ignition, it deals 20 to all of our opponents and all of their creatures. And then, if we have Infect, everybody's dead. But if we yeah. don't, we can then remove all the plus ones from Anti Blight and deal another 20 or 40 or 60 or whatever that number is. Yeah. So that's fantastic. That's pretty good. The, I, the more I see this, it does very much feel like a Brando deck. Yeah. But it very much makes me want to build it. Ooh. I like this. Yeah. I actually like this. Bonus points and it's an advisor. So, Auntie's at bingo. Yeah. All her muscled up dudes. Yeah. But she loses. She's yeah. pissed off. And they ran out of, um, they ran out of vermouth. They're out of vermouth. Oh, I was going to say they ran out of diet soda pop for her to mix in with her um, hidden the vodka. With her has, hidden vodka, yeah. That she has hidden under her saggy boob in her bra. Somebody was standing in front of her in line and was taking too long. Oh. And she carried them. She Excuse is... me. Some of us need to play bingo. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Some yep. of us are here to play. She is wrathful. I want to speak to the manager about this other person taking up so much time in the line. Yep. But no, she will not step out of line to speak to the manager. She will stand in the line holding up the people behind her thus to make the complaint. Yeah. Just self-perpetuating her own complaint. Becoming everything that she hated. Yep. Uh, Yes. Mm -hmm. Only driving her self-hatred forth. Right. More. You perpetuate the cycle. You got to break the cycle. That's what we yeah. talk about here on the nation. Yeah, break breaking the cycle. the cycle very important. Okay, so she's wrathful. So she's wrathful. I mean, she's going to break shit. Yeah, and we're going to start with Vandal Blast. She's going to break all of the artifacts. Ruination. She's going to break all the non-basic lands. Chaos Warp. She's going to break one thing, but maybe give you something that's maybe fine. <laughs> By force, she's going to. <laughs> she's going to break all the force. Man, this is fucking Darth Vader now. <laughs> Aftershock. Well, wait. Um, by force is destroy X target artifacts. Yes. Aftershock is destroy target artifact, creature, or land. Aftershock deals three damage to you. What Isn't a perfect it? fucking card for the deck. <laughs> and it, and I, it costs four. It costs four. Uh, that's such a bad card. Read the card type there, too. Sorcery. <laughs> it's <laughs> a fucking sorcery. It's so bad. Okay, I'm going to pay four. Four. And I'm going to destroy target artifact, creature, or land. Mm-hmm. We can already get that at three mana in pillage. Yeah. Right? Sort of. Yeah. Sh- whatever. We can already get that in three mana in, in chaos, chaos warp. warp. Easier to cast than pillage. Yep. But wait. There's more. I'm going to do it slower, and I'm going to fucking deal three damage to me. <laughs> 
But Antti Blythe's going to get three bigger. What a terrible card. What a bad card this in is every Antti, other situation. This is Antti Blight doing something on her phone a certain yeah. way. Yeah. That's just such the bad, wrongest way to do something. But she doesn't know any other way to do it. Whenever she shows up at somebody's house or her own house, she resets the Wi-Fi and she has to put the password back in. Yeah. Because she doesn't want anybody tracking where she is. I don't so even she, know that she knows that people can track where she is based <laughs> on Wi-Fi she's accessed. I don't even think she knows. There's also an abrade. A braid, yeah. Because she is abrasive, and that's 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 how we do it. She's so. abrasive, yes. Ah. Okay, so that she's, destroys an artifact or or, or a creature or three's a guy. Yep. So she's 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 yelling at the manager. She's not having a good day. She's not having a good day no more. Her hair is ruined. Her sandwich is damp. Her day is ruined. Everybody around her's day is ruined, and she's just screaming in this poor guy's face, telling him the rules. The rules. This is how she thinks it should be. Yeah. She thinks that there should be institutionalized control over every portion of her life because customer service would be better yep. and she's scared of certain pe types of people because Holla. they look different than her. Yep. This is a bad lady. Yeah, this is a this is a nasty woman. This is a bad lady. This is a bad person yeah, and, that's and, and of course around. everything is is somebody else's fault. Absolutely. Right? Every time. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, we've painted the picture. We have. So okay. we get, we're going to start with War's Toll. War's Toll is how I feel every time she walks in the door of the store I work at. Yeah. 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 Can you imagine if Auntie Blight walked into the cell phone store and you were the guy working? Oh, my. I would oh. quit. I would quit. Or, or like the... Um, like she's lined up at Geek Squad at Best Buy. Oh, oh quit. Man. man! If they walked into the, the the store I was working at in the mall, I would just get up, take my name tag off, pull the little sliding door shut, lock the store with her in it, and just leave. Yeah, just. I'll, I'll, leave. I'll tell you a real story. I'll tell take you a real whatever you want. Story. I'm leaving. And this this is a funny story. My dad looks back on this story and laughs like hard now, but it wasn't funny at the time. Probably so was. My dad and I used to install like satellite TV, home theater, satellite radio yep. in people's houses. It's like, my dream job because I want to go into people's houses and look around. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's not all it's cracked up to be. But anyways, we do my grandpa's. Okay. It's a long time ago. Satellite TV. And we hook it all up, blah, blah, blah. Teach him how to use it 500 times. Teach him mm -hmm. his remotes program. So one remote runs his, his satellite receiver and his TV. Everything should work. You push a guide, guide comes up. Push yep. the channel, the channel goes too, right? Okay. So, calls my dad a couple days later. Yep. Damn TV's not working. It doesn't work. It Like, the green light comes on, then it goes off. Then it goes on, then it goes off. And, like, it doesn't work. My TV, it's just, it doesn't work. My TV's black, nothing works. The receiver is on, the little green light is on. And my dad says to my grandpa, Dad, is the TV on? Wow, Jesus Christ, hold on a second. <laughs> And he had to turn the TV on. Yep. <laughs> yep. Even though his remote was programmed for the TV. And and it, they got out of sync because he tried to turn one on with his finger on the unit. Mm -hmm. And then he hit the button on the remote. Yep. So the remote turned the receiver off and the TV on. Black screen. Yep. Then he turned the TV on and the receiver off. Yep. Black screen. Yep. Right? Like... So he was stuck on a black screen all the time, and he said, the green light's on, and my dad had to tell him just to turn the TV on. Yep. It's an honest mistake, but it's funny because he was like 80. Yep. <laughs> uh -huh. So that's Auntie Blight when she walks into Best Buy. Oh, we know it. So War's, War's Toll. Toll. Enchantment for four. Whenever an opponent taps a land on not their turn, uh -uh. tap all lands they control, right? No, it's whenever, a player ta whenever an opponent taps a land, tap all their land. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. If a creature an opponent controls attacks... All creatures that opponent controls attack if able. Yeah, that's what it is. Yep. So you can you can fix that just by saying okay, I'll tap like my whatever in response to War's Toll. I'll tap all my other lands to get mana from them. Yes. It makes you tap out. Yes. Yeah. The old the days of mana burn. War's Toll was better. Yeah, but it's it's also fine now. Yeah, it's good now still. Smoke, smoke. Players cannot untap more than one creature during each upkeep. Obviously, we would untap Anti Blight. Yes. Yes, that's what we would do. Price of glory. P, P of G. Okay. Whenever a player taps a land for mana during another player's turn, destroy that land. Ooh, that's really hard to counterspell or draw at the end of your turn. Yep. That's a fantastic card. Yeah, that makes it really hard to do stuff. 
God Pharaoh's statue. God Pharaoh's statue. This guy's from War of the Spark. I yeah. thought this card would be a little bit bigger than it was. It's a six drop legendary artifact. Spells your opponent's cast. Cost two more to cast. Yep. Also, at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses one life. And step. Oh, and step. Yes. So you so you get it. So, so you, you could hypothetically you could pay six and just do one. That's value, baby. <laughs> oh, that's the kind of value that um, Auntie Blight expects to get out of her cell phone. What Every about when, when phones just were for phoning people? Yep. And other people could listen in on the line at the same time? Yep. Yeah. Love them party lines, baby. Yep. Ensnaring Bridge. Ensnaring Bridge. Ooh, creatures with power greater than the number of cards in your hand can't attack. That's fine. I'll just remove all my counters. And deal double damage to Brash Taunter. Then Brash Taunter will deal double damage to you. You die. Yippers. And now nobody can attack me. And even if they can, I'll just block with Brash Taunter. <laughs> okay. Defense Grid. During each player's turn, each other player's spells cost three more to cast. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fucking gooder. good. Crawl Space. Crawl Space. No more than two creatures can attack you each combat. What's, what's cool is... You can attack whomever you want with 10 or more creatures or whatever, but only two can come to me. Yeah, and then you're high because you, you, you run out, you throw a bunch of eggs at somebody, and then you jump back in the hole. Did you know that card was $17? Did not. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> she just learned it just now. Me too. Butt Moon. Butt Moon. All non-basic lands are mountains. Oh, I love that card. I actually learned that Crawl Space was, was $17 last night. Oh, I, yes, when I, learned, when I was looking at the deck. I learned it right this exact second. Yes. So Auntie wants some um, institutionalized control because that makes her feel safe. Yep. And she wants to be catered to um, in that uh, she just wants her rules to be the fucking rules. That's right. Okay. All right, Ron. So we have established... That this lady is just a piece of shit. Yeah, nobody likes her. <laughs> no, and she's no fun for anybody. But you know these bad aunties, they always have somebody. Some some child in the family, some neighbor kid that they take under their bingo wing. And What is the sound of that? Taking somebody under your bingo wing. It's kind of like when you... Kind of, yeah. What is the... Yeah, and it Moving just on. it just feels kind of warm and kind of slimy because drapes over you like a scarf. Yeah, hanging down your back like a cape. Yes, bingo wing cape. Yeah, yeah. There's always that one person yes. that they've taken to to be their protege. That they're gonna they're gonna teach them the rules of life. They're gonna teach them how to get through life, and in that way, they are a horrible influence. But wait, there's more on everybody around them. We've got like 20 ways. In addition to everything that we said, yeah. that Auntie Blight is a bad influence. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, man. Now, let's just remind you. Let's just remind. Whenever a source we control deals damage to to us, when we hurt ourselves, we put that many counters on Auntie Blight. Mm -hmm. And I'm listening. I'm freaking listening. Because remember, we got damage doublers, too. Yes, we do. And triplers. Yes, All doublers right. and triplers. Okay, where are we going? Double, triple. We're going to Zozu the Punisher. ZZP. Okay. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, Zozu the Punisher deals two damage to that land's controller. We're also playing an Ankh of Mishra, which does the same thing. But it's an artifact. But it's an artifact. Spell shock. Where is that? Oh, yeah, way up there. Alphabetical, yeah. Ryan. Alphabetical. That's right. Okay. Whenever a player successfully casts a spell... Spell shock deals two damage to that player. Heh. That's any time we do anything now, whether yeah. it be play a land or play a spell, we're going to take two. Now it's cast a spell. It's not land. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, if you have but, Zozu, but Zozu spell yeah, shock, yeah. yeah. So anytime we do anything, we're taking two. Yeah, if a card leaves your hand in any way. And buffs our ante. Ooh. Two. Okay. Rolling earthquake. X damage to each creature and each player. Mm -hmm. Creature with no without horsemanship. Th that basically <laughs> yeah. says each creature. Yeah. And Roiling. Oh, sorry. W when when we hit other earthquake variants, you let me know. Okay. Okay. Roiling vortex. Roiling vor at the beginning of each player's upkeep. Roiling vortex deals one damage to them. Yeah. That's us too. That's right. Okay. We can go whenever a player casts a spell. If no mana was spent to cast it, it deals five damage to that player, and. Also, we can go red, 
your opponents can't gain life this turn. This was one of your Zendikar Rising cheap pickups on top five and five one time, right? It was. I love this card. I really like this card. This I is... would I would love to put Artifact Destruction, and I would love to put um, free burn spells in this deck. I'm thinking of like Thunderclap and Fire Blast and Pyrokinesis. And there's there's a couple more from masks like if we have a mountain and uh, if somebody gained life yeah uh, sacrifice two mountains deflecting Disco swat deflecting swat all of those are free and partner with this card so fantastically because yeah. we could go like let's say let's say we want to do um, I think thunderclap is the one that deals three damage yeah could we thunderclap ourselves and then this will deal five to us yes. And then Anti Blight gets plus eight, plus eight. And the Spell Shock twos us. So we get plus 10, plus 10. Yes. Yeah. And we have a, a Furnace of Wrath. So now it's plus 20, plus 20. And we can kill somebody. Well, I mean, we've also taken 20. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> deal damage to myself? I told you I was listening. That's the, I'm, If I'm going to deal damage to myself, I'm I'm cutting to the bone. When you're, when you're right, you're right. Now, Pyrohemia, one of my favorite cards. Oh, that's red. Deal one damage to everything. And if there's ever any no creature, then you have to sack it. Don't care. Molten Disaster. This is an Earthquake variant. Oh, with Kicker. That's right. What happens when you kick it? It has split second. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So uncounterable Earthquake if you pay three. Okay. Uh, mana Barbs. Whenever a player taps mana, land, land for mana specifically, if hey. we have non-mana abilities... Uh, it deals one damage to them. Sick. Okay. Heartless Hidetsugu. Ooh, important that he deals damage. Uh-huh. Okay. Ooh, this could be an instant kill yes. everybody. Yes. If you have a damage doubler or a tripler, depending on life. Well, you die too. Tap, and he deals damage equal to, e to each player equal to half their life total rounded down. So if we had an odd number of life... Would it kill us? And then we damaged, and then we doubled it. Yeah. That would, uh, if that I'm at, if I'm at like, if you're at forty-one, if I'm, at, if I'm at seven, and I take half my life in damage rounded down, I would take three, and then I would take three again, so I'd be at one. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. If I'm at eight, I take half rounded down is four. Is still four. And you take four again and eat shit, and then I die. Yes. yes. So odd. Odd numbers. So yeah. if you have an odd number, you heartlets hit Itsugu. Let's say opponent number one's an even number, so they're fucking dead. And then the second one and the third one, they're both, both at odd numbers as well. So they're both sitting at like one. Yeah. And then you can attack one of them with anti-blight and then untap her somehow and then tap her again to burn them out. We don't got no untaps in there. Well, fuck. We could, um, and and yeah, oh yeah, and the the tap ability is is removing a thing, right? Yeah, yeah. That ah, okay. balls. That's okay. And that sucks. Fault line, another earthquake. This one's an instant. Yep. Exocrine, another earthquake. This, this one's, one's a creature. On a two two. This one's a creature with ravenous. Yes. See last week's episode or see yesterday's episode. Eidolon of the Great Revel. Did you know this card was $17? I am learning that just now as well. This yes. is 2-2 two, two for red, red. Enchantment creature spirit. Whenever you cast a spell with converted mana cost three or less, Eidolon of the Great Revel deals two damage to that player. Nice. And that would be us. Uh, oh, that one doesn't work for free spells because most of them have a pretty big mana cost. But yeah. we've got lots of little guys. And then... Earthquake yep. is an earthquake variant. Yep. Descent into Avernus. This is cool. Ooh, well, read it. You know what this card does. Descent into Avernus is a spell for, or an enchantment, sorry, for red two. At the beginning of your upkeep, put two descent counters on it. Then each player creates X treasure count treasure tokens, where X is the number of counters on it. Then descent into Avernus deals damage equal to that number to each person. Sure. So you make two things. Two everybody. Make four things, four everybody. Make six things, six everybody. Make eight things, eight everybody. Yeah. Very cool. Defiler of Instinct. Okay. So this lets you pay a red, or sorry, two life instead of a red when you cast a spell. Mm -hmm. So sure, it kind of gives your spell Phyrexian mana. Sort of. Sort of. Okay. But what's cool is whenever you cast a red permanent spell... Defiler of Instinct deals one damage to any target. And that target could be us. We pick our stupid self. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It makes our stuff kind of free or, or reduced. And then we deal damage to ourself. 
Anyways. Citadel of Pain. This is Auntie's house. Look at this. This is from Prophecy. Yeah. This is a card from Prophecy. Yeah. This is probably the only card from Prophecy we play all year, and it was in the last episode. Probably, of the year. yeah. Okay. Citadel of Pain. Enchantment for red, two. At the beginning of each player's turn. That's weird. At the end of each player's turn. At the end of each player's turn. Not as weird. Citadel of Pain deals X damage to that player, where X is the number of untapped lands they control. Yeah. So we go Citadel of Pain. Pass the turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's my play. Arc Bond. Choose target creature. Whenever that creature is dealt damage this turn, it deals de that much damage to each other creature and player. Oh, that's what you do with Brash Taunter. Yeah. There yeah. it is. That's Brash Taunter having a mighty stick. Although he also Brash Taunters you at that point. Anti Blight will only get bigger. <laughs> she get big again. That's true. And the oh. last one is Acidic Soil. Acidic Soil. Uh, acidic Soil deals one damage to each player for each land they control. Nice. That's actually really good, too. It's a good card. Now, solid we, card. we don't usually talk about the land, but I do because it's thematic. At the end of the day, Anti Blight had a fantastic time ruining everybody's day yeah. in customer service at Bingo. And, and into the future as she wrecks up the next generation. Yeah, yeah. And, and at the Christmas dinner last week and oh, all yeah. that stuff. What a stuff. piece okay. of shit, hey? So she's got uh, Witch's Clinic, which is, it that's taps the, for colorless. That's the doctor's office she shows up at and just ruins everybody's the day. The doctor, yeah, because she wants like some prescription eye cream or whatever. Anyways, yeah. she, maybe she's got a thing on her elbow. I don't know. Um, two, tap. Target commander gains lifelink until end of turn. Cool. We've already established that that's good. Yes. Okay. War room. That's what she turns the kitchen table into or the dining room table at uh, yep. Christmas Day. That's right. Into. Or that's like the line at Best Buy. Ooh, yeah. Or, or, yeah. or any of the other examples we've already had. It taps for colorless. Three tap. Pay life equal to the number of colors in your commander's color identity. Ooh. Draw a card. Ooh. It's too bad that didn't say damage for each color. Yeah. So it doesn't work. And and we've got a City of Brass for the same reason. City yeah. of Brass deals one damage to you. It's pretty cool. And Mana Confluence makes you pay life. Mm -hmm. That's why this is in here, even though it's a monocolor deck. <laughs> and the final one is a, a Barbarian Ring, which taps and deals one damage to you, and you get a red. So cool. Yep. Also, if you have Threshold, you can red, tap, sacrifice it. Barbarian Ring deals two, two to any creature or player. And as we know, the Barbarian Ring at Auntie's house is that rug in the middle of the carpet that just smells like smoke and cat butts. Yes. And she just makes the kids fight on it. Or or is a Barbarian Ring like... Like that glass or that crystal ashtray from like 1989. Uh, yeah. yeah. Never been cleaned. Never been cleaned. Or it could also be made out of brass. Yep, could be. Yeah. All yeah. tarnished and shit. Yeah. Just ugly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It could also be the light fixtures that were never changed out since the house was built in 1949. Yeah. 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 Post-war house and she's lived in it like ever since. Now normally, right at this point. <laughs> yes. We'd say... That's the deck. Yeah. But, you know, we might have referred to him several times, but there might be, Ryan, new <laughs> members of CCO Nation that are unaware of the most powerful, most versatile, most handsomest, most durable, because he's the only guy who can put up with Auntie's shit. And it's Brash Taunter. Yeah, he's our family's last hope. He's the old, he's the hero that we needed and the hero that we deserve. Yeah, he's he's the guy. He's like your auntie's boyfriend, or you know, like when your grandparents pass away or they get divorced or whatever, and your grandma's got like that guy. Yeah, that's you don't want to say your grandma's boyfriend. Yeah, that's right, weird. right. But is that guy that your grandma's with? Yeah, and. If your grandma dies and she's a miserable old Auntie Blight, yeah. you want that guy to stay around? Yeah, you want to keep him around? Yeah, but he probably won't. But sometimes they do. <laughs> hey, sometimes they do. they do. Yeah. And in that, and in those cases, what you're going to end up with is a super versatile, super powerful, super handsome, one one for red and one that's indestructible. Whenever he is dealt damage, he deals that much damage to target opponent. And you can pay red to tap 
to have him fight another creature. Fantastic. Could be anti blight. Yes. She could he could stand they up to anti blight for fight you each other. And kill somebody else. <laughs> as is the way with miserable pieces of shit. Eventually like he'll blight. just say, Oh yeah, you're right. And then he'll kill someone else. Yes. And then he'll just <laughs> axe murder somebody in rage. Just murder. Oh. Okay, I want to move to strengths and weaknesses real quick. Strengths and we're, weaknesses. We're going to go all in. Okay, we're going to start with weaknesses. What? Okay. 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 All right. I'm going to start with this strength for the people it's a strength for, but I'm going to roll it into a weakness, and then I'll do the other weaknesses. Okay? Okay. Almost feels like a red stacks deck. That's the strength, is because it, like it can control that hard by tapping lands, destroying lands, yep. and damaging you for doing your strategy. Yep. Right. That's kind of what stacks decks do. That's true. Okay. The weakness. Some people will wholeheartedly not want to, or if they do, won't enjoy playing against this. People don't like that type of gameplay. In my experience, generally in casual magic. Yeah, yeah. I think this one might have a little bit of an edge over those other decks like that. Given that I play a deck that's remarkably like this, yep. that nobody has an issue with. It's yep. my Tor Brand Punisher deck. And this one might even be able to get away with it a little bit easier. Because, like, you're doing more damage to yourself than yes. to them. And I think yes. that might be a, a selling point. If if you say something like, okay, if you want to play your big, big, take eight. I'm at eight. I'll die if you play that or whatever, right? Yeah. Right? And and it, it I'm going to get to that in a minute. It could lead to slow games where you're just tapping everything and, and nobody wants to play anything until they draw their removal spell, whatever. Okay, so that that's, that's the negative. That's sure. how this could go. Sure. But if I get back to take eight and play your thing and try to kill me, mm -hmm. feels very high risk, high yes, reward. Yes, which is fun. And I love that. That's a strength. Sorry, Joe, I'm, I'm, I'm hopping all over the place. But here we go. Strengths, and I'm going to list them. New hotness. Brand new from Jumpstart. Advisor. Very neat. Uh, not tribal, but come on. We we got three or four red advisors we could put in here. Mono red. Mono red. Plays Brash Taunter. Lots of board control. Could have Voltron sneaky kills. Yes. Yeah, I do like that. Lots of card advantage, too. We've got um, Auntie's Cash Dash. Seven mass card draw and or tutor cards yeah why are we not playing gamble just for theme oh <laughs> yes bingo oh man yeah i'll do a bingo altar with gamble fantastic now small weakness okay this is gonna be a hard to get commander in yeah like it, by the time people listen to this i'll bet you anti-blight is hard to come by which I mean, I guess it's a jumpstart thing. Yeah, you can certainly do the Watsy thing and just make a proxy of it. Yeah, but oh, if you want to play a real bastard. one, <laughs> you, you know, it, you might have a tough time tracking one down. And that is, a, I think that that is a thing. If you're into playing with with the real cards, air quotes, yeah, it, it might be tricky to track one down at, at a certain point. You know, you know what is another way to say that. Because you can go to any online vendor and you can find this card. Like, people have this card. You can get it. Yeah. Some cards are hard to find. Yeah. But this one will be findable. But because of the frequency at which you can find it at, uh, 14 bucks. Yeah. Right? And U.S. So that's like 406 Canadian. Yeah. Maybe it'll go down as more people start to adopt Jumpstart into their booster pack opening um, routine. But maybe it'll go up like lots of Jumpstart stuff did last year. So, I remember when Jumpstart 1 first came out. Yep. Moxis. Yep. Came out as a $40 card. Bruvac still 30 some $40. And I think, yeah, Bruvac went up. Moxis came down. And, and we're not sure and, where Anti is going to go. And Zerzoth kind of held the same, like between 10 and 20. And Allosaurus Shepherd. Don't even get me started. Yeah, God. Right. And okay. they even reprinted that son of a bitch. So we're, we're, talking, we're talking about it. If you want to pick any of this stuff, stuff up i did get jumpstart singles from fusion Ooh! i did use cco spring promo code nah. and if i need more in 2023 i will use the new promo code to save five percent off smart move yeah i like that Very a lot much so yeah. links uh everywhere that you find the show moving on to the budget section just budget real section. quick just yeah. so people know uh, a monstrosity like this what it might set them back sure as is right now deck 329 bone that's that's pretty good for a deck that plays a lot of old cards, yep. a lot of specific cards, and a lot of cards that you see in lots of places. 
You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like there's lots of like kind of not staple, but there's lots of stuff in here that you just see, and so it's going to be money. Yeah. Now I've got a couple things that I would say regarding that. Most expensive card oh, on the yeah. deck. Fiery I emancipation. Oh, it's on the list. Just hear me out. Huh. If we go back to that weakness and say some people won't like playing against this kind of card, right? I would lump ensnaring bridge, crawl space, and grafted exoskeleton into that category. Sure. Some people don't like infect. That's nine dollars. Some people don't like crawl space. Seventeen. Ensnaring bridge. Eighteen. That's a bunch of money already. Yeah. Fiery emancipation. You might accidentally kill yourself with that card. Might. I. I have killed myself with that card lots of times. Uh, yeah, I I've, I've seen it happen. So if if that's a risk for you, if, if doing math before your spell is on the stack, isn't your strong suit? Yeah. Save yourself thirty bucks. Yeah. Yeah, because it's thirty bucks, by the way. And then the last one, Eidolon of Great Revel. It's seventeen dollars, and I'm sure there's other burn spells that you could add to the deck, like a Fire Blast, where you can deal four damage to yourself for free. I think that doing free damage to yourself is such a huge advantage that this deck could take that you could cut that card. Final one, Jessica's Will at 18. Yeah. It is one of the best cards in the format. <laughs> and that's why it's so many it's dollars. 18, but play a Thunderclap, play a Pyrokinesis, play a, a something else that isn't that much money that could be cast for free to put free counters on Anti-Blight. You know what would be real neat? And it's not... An inexpensive card at this point. But you know what would be really good in this deck? Mm. Repercussion. Oh, yeah? That'd be awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Re what, it's a red, red wand for an enchantment. Whenever your creature, whenever a creature takes damage, they deal damage, like that much damage to their controller. It, it would Ooh. make, if you had repercussion and, um, I guess if you had repercussion and like a doubler, you could make any creature into a brash taunter for the for that player. Sort of, yeah. Right? I mean, you don't need the doubler, no. and, it, and it would turn into a brash taunter, but what you would get is probably a dead creature and a lot of damage to an opponent. That would yeah. be very good. Yeah, and, like, you'd take some damage. Like, you block their little shitty 2-2 two -two with Anti-Blight, and then you would take damage. You take damage, and Anti-Blight gets But bigger. who's dealing the damage there? The Repercussion and or the Anti-Blight? The Repercussion. So Anti-Blight would get bigger. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. That's good. Yes. Okay. That's why it's good in the deck. So the five or six cards that I cut, 109 bucks. Takes the takes the deck down to two hundred and twenty dollars. Then all of a sudden, that's like, hey, I have all these cards. That's just that's not what the deck costs yeah. because I have all the cards. Yeah, lots right? of this stuff isn't going to be hard to get. I don't think. I don't think nothing is really expensive, and a lot of it you're going to have, and and the stuff that you don't have in a two hundred dollar deck might cost you forty or fifty bucks, which yeah. I think is a fine amount if if it's a deck that you're going to play long term. Yeah. And even if it's not, it's gonna. There's lots of stuff in here that you're gonna play somewhere else. There's nothing in this deck that's so this deck that's an investment. I should say there's cards yes. in here, but like all of the good stuff that's gonna cost you money is stuff that's gonna go somewhere else. Yeah. Oh yeah. Whoa. Don't know if I should spend that eighteen dollars on that Jesco's will because I might not keep this deck. You play that in literally any other red deck. Yeah. Almost. Almost any other red deck. What's one that wouldn't play it? I don't know. I don't play it in Animar. But I could. Yeah, you could. I could, and it would be good there. Yeah. Because I draw cards with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good. And make a bunch. Oh, you don't really need the, all the red mana. Oh, man, I know, but. That makes it even better because you don't have to wait until you have Animar to play it. Yeah. Fantastic deck. Big thanks to Tyler Matuli Stone for sending it in. Big thanks for his support through patreon.com slash CCO podcast. And. All of our Patreon supporters, all the people who've used all of our promo codes, all the people who've shopped at the store, been part of the CCO experience. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap up everything that uh, is the year end wrap up, but this isn't the year end wrap up. Even yeah, well, the point is, if you've been a part of the nation, we appreciate you. We love you. We're really happy that you're here. We hope that you're going to stick with us into the new year and beyond. We're going to have a lot more uh, announcements of where we're going to be and what we're going to be doing coming up in the next couple of weeks so stay tuned for that hopefully we can get to see even more of you guys because that is the best part of the job for me and i think for ryan as well yep it's fun and humbling at the same time to know the support that we have out there and the the really cool impacts that we've had on all of our friends and our fans and all those people out there and uh, we're going to be back next week yes with a year in review episode 
yeah, of Commander we're, Coco. We, we didn't want to. We didn't want Watsy to spring any last minute bullshit on us and and have yeah. us miss something. We're gonna miss the 2022 final chance super secret lair drop. Yes, where they reprint all of the Power Nine and a set of ten fetches and duels for like twenty eight hundred bucks. Yeah. Non playable, of course. Oh yeah, yeah. Non playable, of no, course. No. But uh, so we wanted to wait until after they released that, so we could dunk on it a little bit in the new year. Yeah. Hell's yeah. So happy new year, everybody. Be safe. Have a great year. Thanks for being with us. And we're going to see you next week on another episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song. <laughs>